Hi, welcome back to Railways Explained. As you might know, two months ago we had a poll in which we asked our viewers to help us select the countries whose railway systems they want to be covered on Railways Explained. And the choice fell on Germany and South Korea. As we covered Germany not in one but three videos, now is the turn for South Korea. Today's video will be a part of the Railway Nation series in which we try to comprehensively discuss the railway system of a particular country, while the next video will cover the topic of the South Korean high-speed rail system. We were lucky enough that one of the members of the Railways Explained team visited Korean Railways back in 2019. He was a participant in the Seminar of Railway Infrastructure Specialists in Seoul, so we can share some first-hand experiences and impressions of the Korean rail system and a journey with a high-speed train from Seoul to Busan, as well as Incheon Airport Maglev. As always, let's start with the history of Korean railways, which is very interesting, bearing in mind that they were all but Korean over a long period of time. As in most world countries, the development of Korean railways began during the 19th century. Namely, in 1896, the Joseon dynasty that ruled Korea awarded American engineer James Morse a concession to build a railway line between Seoul and Kemulpo, today Incheon, and one French company to connect Seoul and Uiju, the line known as Jonggui. One remark for our viewers, Uiju is a county in North Pyongan province in today's North Korea. Back then, two Koreas were a single country. The construction of the Kemulpo line began in March 1897, but after Morse was unable to secure the necessary funding, he sold the concession to a Japanese company, headed by Shibusawa Eiichi in December 1898. The line was fully completed by July 1900. The French gave up their concession since they also failed to secure the funds for the construction, but the Koreans did not give up. So, they formed the Northwest Railway Bureau and agreed to finance the building of the Jongui Line with French support. In May 1902, construction began with completion in 1905, but under the supervision of the Japanese military. Japan's influence on railway development in Korea started even before Japan's occupation of Korea in 1910. In September 1898, the Korean government awarded a concession to a Japanese company to connect Seoul and Busan by rail. The Japanese government in 1901 founded the Seoul Busan Railway Corporation to oversee construction, however, due to delays, the Japanese government took direct control of the project in 1903. Construction lasted from August 1901 until December 1904, with operations beginning in January 1905. In the early years, the rail trip between Seoul and Busan took almost 14 hours. This and many other railway lines in Korea were constructed by Japanese companies and the Japanese military to facilitate troop movements across the Korean peninsula during the Russo-Japanese War. We mentioned this war in our video on the construction of the Trans-Siberian Railway. To manage rail infrastructure and services in 1906, the Japanese created the Railway Management Bureau under the administration of the Japanese authorities in Korea. Shortly after, the Korean Empire was formally annexed by the Empire of Japan, with the Japan-Korea Treaty of 1910, this bureau changed its name as well as who had control over it. It remained so until the end of World War II and the division into two Koreas along the famous 38th parallel. Following World War II and during the divided occupation of Korea, from September 1945 to September 1948, the United States Army military government in Korea operated all railway lines in Korea. A Korean state-owned company was established in September 1948 to take over operations from the American military. The railway network was additionally damaged during the Korean War from 1950 to 1953, but it was later rebuilt and improved by the USA Transportation Corps, which is a combat service support branch of the USA Army. An important fact to keep in mind is that after the division into two Koreas, in terms of transport connections, South Korea has practically become an island. As after 1948, the South Korean government slowly began to manage its railways in order to ensure even more independent management, in 1963 it founded the Korea National Railroad. It was tasked with working on further railway improvements, electrification and construction of the second tracks. Bearing in mind how devastated South Korea was due to the wars, 
the then government adopted the concept of the five-year economic and social development plans. These plans were designed to increase wealth within the South Korea and strengthen political stability. A change in policy from import substitution, industrialization to export-oriented growth occurred throughout these five-year plans, and the result is better known by the term the miracle on the Han River. This term refers to the period of rapid economic growth of South Korea in those years. With average speeds of 60 to 70 km per hour during the 1960s, trains were the primary mode of transportation in South Korea. However, at the time, the government embarked on building highways as a new transport wonder, and it opened the Seoul Incheon Highway in 1969 and the Seoul Busan Highway in 1970. As you can see on the graph, the participation of railways in passenger transport was 52%, while in freight transport they participated with 87.5%. Also, you can see the astonishing development of road transport in the period of only three decades. Keep in mind that this is not only the redistribution of existing flaws, but rather the emergence of new, as great economic development of the country generated immense traffic needs. Also, investments in railways had a negative trend during the implementation of the five-year plans, from 61% during the first plan to only 13% during the seventh. Roads and highways were the primary beneficiaries of this decline. While new rail lines were constructed due to the closure of other lines, the length of the country's rail network only increased from 3,032 km in 1962 to 3,123 km in the year 2000. In comparison, during the same period, the road network grew from 27,000 km to 90,000 km. As we already mentioned, the economic growth of South Korea in the past decades increased both the mobility of people and the demand for efficient transport services. Given the trend of high-speed rail construction at the time, in March 1992, the Korean government created the Korea High-Speed Rail Construction Authority to oversee the construction of the famous Jayongbu High-Speed Railway between Seoul and Busan. We will talk about this line in more detail in the next video. In 1999, the division of the Korean National Railroad responsible for the construction was merged with the Korea High-Speed Rail Construction Authority. A few years later, the Korean government decided to follow another trend, which is the restructuring of the national incumbent based on activities, infrastructure management and transport. As a result, after the building of Jayongbu High-Speed Rail, the Korean National Railroad was split into Core Rail, which was established in January 2004 for the task of providing railway services, and the Korea Rail Network Authority, which was established in January 2005 and dealing with management and maintenance of railway infrastructure. It was renamed Korea National Railway in September 2020. This actually allowed open access in the Korean railway system. Railway reform and introduction of private rail companies into Korea's network continued into 2010s. In 2012, the Ministry in Charge of Transport called for bids to operate high-speed trains for 15 years on the Seoul-Busan and Seoul-Mokpo lines. The Ministry's goal was to end the state-owned Korail's monopoly and create competition for the state-run KTX trains, hoping to increase the quality of service and decrease fares. SR Corporation, founded in 2014, won this concession to operate the trains. We'll take a short break here. In the seminar that we mentioned at the beginning, a member of the Railways Explained team had the opportunity to discuss with some Korean experts how it's possible that SR Corporation can be a competitor to Core Rail if Core Rail owns a large percentage of shares in this company. Namely, Core Rail owns 41% of SR Corporation shares, while a teacher's pension fund and two Korean banks own a remaining 59%. The main argument of Korean experts was the fact that SR operates independently from the government and Core Rail. In any case, SR's high-speed rail services were launched from Seoul's Susao Station in 2016, thus introducing competition in the Korean railway market. We must point out that it was quite challenging to sort out statistical data for this chapter, as most of the statistics are in Korean. So, we gave our best with the translation and we hope that we managed to illustrate the performance of the Korean rail system. South Korea has a total railway network of 4,285 kilometers. 
It connects all major cities and 2,790 kilometers are double track. The length of high-speed railway lines on which trains can run at speeds of 300 km per hour or more on the majority of tracks is about 630 km. About 74% of the network is electrified with a system of 25 kV 60 Hz. We also mentioned the railway system of South Korea in our video related to innovation. Namely, in 2017, the commercial use of LTE 4G technology on the railway network was introduced, on the Wangju Gangnyang High Speed Rail Line. The Korea Train Control System 2 or KTCS 2 signaling system was developed, which will be used in the future to standardize signaling across the country. The system uses LTR, which allows broadband networks to expand from solely carrying voice to include voice video, text, images, and locations. The trial, which is due to be completed in 2022, will take place on the 180 km Iksan Yeosu section of the Yola line. If you are interested in rail innovations, we recommend you take a look at that video. Also, South Korea is home to the world's fourth longest railway tunnel. The tunnel, 50.3 km long, which consists of a double track tube, is a part of the 61.1 km Susao Pyongtek High Speed Railway that connects Susao Station in the southeastern part of Seoul with the Jayongbu High Speed Railway. The tunnel itself takes up about 82% of the total line length. In addition, South Korea has developed in-house Magla technology that is in commercial use in Daejeon and Incheon Airport. If you want to know more, watch our video about Magla trains in commercial use. South Korea has a population of 52 million people and is characterized by a high population density of 507 inhabitants per kilometer squared. In 2019, about 163.5 million people, or 448,000 people per day, were transported by rail. And on the screen you can see the statistics for the period 2016-2019. The reason why we selected this period is the way of keeping statistics. Namely, before 2016, the number of passengers transported by rapid transit systems was also taken into account. In 2019, 139.5 million passengers were transported by Core Rail and 24 million by SR Corporation. As you can see, the introduction of SR Corporation has provided added value given that the number of passengers by Core Rail has not decreased, while the number of passengers transported by SR has increased 20 times in 4 years. Of these 163.5 million passengers, about 55% were transported by high speed trains, or 66.6 .6 million passengers, with services provided by Core Rail, and 23.3 million with services provided by SR. 698 stations are under the jurisdiction of Core Rail and only 3 stations are under the jurisdiction of SR Corporation. The importance of the corridor between Seoul and Busan can be emphasized by the frequency of train departures. Namely, in 2019, between Seoul and Busan, 105 KTX trains organized by Core Rail and 80 SRT trains organized by SR Corporation were in operation every day. By the way, during 2019, there were about 3,300 trains on all lines every day. This photo of a timetable was taken by our colleague in Seoul. As for the tons transported, they have been declining in the last few years. During 2019, 28.6 million tons were transported. We must emphasize that all this is domestic transport, bearing in mind that there is no international traffic due to the situation with North Korea. If there was a possibility for international traffic, these numbers would be much higher since South Korea has great potential, primarily due to its developed industry. After all, it is a seat of large corporations such as Samsung, Hyundai, Kia, LG, etc. One piece of information that many people don't know, Korea's largest construction companies include Samsung CNT Corporation, which built some of the tallest buildings and most noteworthy skyscrapers in the world such as Petronas Towers, Taipei 101 and Burj Khalifa. In addition, South Korea initiated the connection of railways and roads with North Korea on December 26, 2018. A groundbreaking ceremony was held in the North Korean city of Kaesong as a mark of the start of the project. With the completion of this inter-Korean railway project, which includes the construction of the missing links, the connection of Busan and Europe by rail will be possible. Whether this will be the case, time will tell. On January 14th this year, a new groundbreaking ceremony was organized 
but this time to mark the beginning of the construction of the 111 km long Tonghe line between Zhejin Station in Gosong and the coastal city of Gangnyang. The line will connect Gosong, which is currently only connected to the North Korean rail network, with the rest of the South Korean network. The project is expected to cost around $2.31 billion and could be completed as early as 2027. Although the rail performance in Korea is on high levels, Korea's transportation system is actually based on roads. In 2018, compared to the 88.3% in the road sector, railway model share stood at 11.5%. Still, the railway model share is projected to increase up to 14% when all planned projects are completed by 2025. Following the construction plans under the Third National Railway Network Plan, Korean railways aim to add around 900 km to the existing railway network. With the realization of this plan, the connection of all major cities will be realized, with travel time under 2 hours and in the capital region under 30 minutes, as shown in the picture. You were watching the story of the South Korean rail system on Railways Explained. Before the end, we would like to thank all our patrons for their generous support. If you want to support Railways Explained, you can do it directly on Patreon. Check out the link in the description. And finally, this was all for today, we hope you enjoyed and learned something new about the railways of the world. Don't forget to like this video, share it with your real loving friends and of course subscribe to our channel. Until the next time, goodbye.